Hey Phantomaniacs, we got a big one today, an unboxing on the Needless Things YouTube channel. We don't do big giant stuff like this all that often, which is why you don't see my lovely face all that often, but for something like this there was no way around it. I had to be in the frame for at least the first portion of this video. Today we are taking a look at the HasLab Razor Crest from the Star Wars Vintage Collection. Uh, as you can see, it's in a big, beautiful box here, uh, reminiscent of the original Kenner Star Wars line. It even says Kenner right here on the box. Uh, includes figures of Den, Grogu, and the Jawa with the big nasty egg. Uh, and, and I just love this packaging. It's, it's, I still have the packaging from the Katana, which you can go back and watch that review on this very channel uh, if you like. And this is just, it's something very special. We don't get big vehicles like this very often anymore. Certainly not from retail, uh, which is why HasLab exists to give us the opportunity to get big, incredible things like this. And, and um, something like this never would have been at retail. Uh, and we'll see as we look at the ship itself, the amount of detail that's in the sculpt and in the paint. This couldn't be achieved at retail, even back, at the, back in the day. Uh, so... Let's take one more look at the box here. Uh, I've got some close-ups, and you guys can see on the front, you know, nice product shots. On the top, you've got your feature shots, which I always like to see. On the bottom, uh, another feature shot of kind of the ship in it damaged. Uh, and then turn it around to the back, and we've got that beautiful line drawing of the vehicle. Uh, which again is you know straight from the original Kenner line. Uh, it's it's great. Now you'll see mine is a little mashed up at the top here. Uh, I don't care, but I'm sure some collectors will because you guys know I'm getting ready to open this thing up and I'll keep this box. I still have the one from the sail barge even though it takes up a ton of space because it's so nice you can't throw it out. Uh, but you know that's that's not great and I have to say this one was not shipped as carefully as the sail barge was. Uh, it was just in an outer carton with this box inside. Uh, the sail barge, I believe it was in two cartons inside the shipping carton, if, I rem if I'm remembering correctly. But anyway, let's open this thing up. We've got our trusty little gizmo here, our slice that I'm still enjoying. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and just slice through both sides because I don't know how difficult it's going to be. I might have to be pushing from one end, pulling from the other. We'll find out. Oh, look at that. Open the right end first because the instruction booklet is sitting right there. We're going to set that to the side. That's very important. Kids, read those instruction booklets before you start putting stuff together. Don't just go throwing parts together all willy-nilly. You could do something out of order and completely ruin your brand new toy. All right, so we've got some styrofoam inside. We all know that's mom's favorite. And looks like that may be the way to do it. Or not. There we go. Oh, this is the, uh, oh my gosh, there's a lot in there. All right. Like I said, we're keeping that box. So that, I suspect, is the stand, the flight stand. Oh, look, there are pieces of the Razor Crest just hanging out of the styrofoam here that I was just dragging across the table. That's super. All right, let's see what we've got. Secured with tape, one long piece of tape. Will you forgive me if I do a little peewee for just a minute? All right, I'm sorry, I'm just very excited. I'm on a Star Wars high. Uh, we have the additional carbonite captives, and we'll get uh, close-ups of those guys because I, this, this portion of the video is essentially the unboxing portion. Uh, we will cut to close-ups of everything once we get to the review portion. Uh, so we'll carbonite guys. And it looks like landing gear are stuck on the outside here. And then 
flip it back over. Like I said, I believe this is the base of the display stand. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Mandalorian's got the logo on it. This is a nice, thick plastic, really sturdy feeling. That over there. I will not be putting that piece of tape on my face. And uh, then we have got one more long piece of tape going all the way around this guy. Or gal. Either way. I guess gal, really, because ships you, you tend to refer to as a uh, uh, feminine. So the Razor Crest, I would say, she's about out of this container. I love this this styrofoam. When I was a kid, it was such a big deal to get big giant pieces of styrofoam like this, whether they came with toys or an appliance or whatever, because once you got whatever it was protecting out, well, that meant like I missed a cut somewhere. Uh, that meant that you had a new base for your action figures. Because these have the most unique and interesting sort of insides. Sorry guys, this is... Lovely styrofoam noises. Is that a, is that an ASMR? Is that something that people want to listen to? Do I need to release a separate video of uh, the soothing noises of styrofoam? That could be a whole other thing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Would you guys would you guys sign up for Patreon for that? Is that is that where that's supposed to take place? Man, I cannot get through this tape. This is driving me crazy. There we go. Whew. Oh, look, there's figures falling out. Be careful with those, because uh, those are probably going up on eBay. A little indication of which way to open this might have been helpful. All right, so here we have... Uh, the Off-World Jawa Elder, complete with the uh, egg. I can't remember the name of that creature. Do you remember Phantom Jr.? Um, do you? No, it's not Dewback. Um, it ends up on his... I think it's just the horn. The horn something? Yeah. The horn something. Tell me in the comments. I can't remember. Although I'll look it up between now and the end of the video. Uh, but it ends up on his armor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mudhorn. The Mudhorn Egg. Sometimes. We have more goons in carbonite. Again, we'll take a look at those in a minute when we get down to the details of this thing. Okay, where is... Den? What's in the other, um, uh, below him? In the what? Below the Jawa. I mean, um. That's it? Oh, Grogu. But. Maybe he's in the ship. Huh. We'll, we'll keep going. He's got to be in here somewhere. Uh, beautiful, thick, crystal, clear. Uh, these are parts of the stand. And I'm not going to assemble it, but I want to just kind of set them carefully out of the way because, although things are falling all over the place, uh, these absolutely crystal clear, gorgeous plastic here. Uh, I've got the guns, a little bag of kibble. Uh, oh, oh, he was coming with it anyway, right? Yeah. So... He's just bagged. Dan is just in a bag. Uh, and he's got his fabric cape. That's the big difference between him and the main mainline retail release. We've got our engines. And we've got the body of the ship. Let's see here. 
Oh, man. This is, yeah, something I didn't mention because it was sitting on a table in front of me and not like... Oh, man, is something else scraping on here? Did I, oh. Uh, something else I didn't mention... Because, like I said, it was sitting on a table in front of me and I wasn't holding it up. Noise! Uh, is, is, this is heavy. This is a big, heavy thing. Uh, all right. Let's get all our wrapping out of here. This paint job is incredible. Uh, this, I mean, this looks like... There we go. This is a Star Wars vehicle. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Got the engine. Oh, this wonderful orange translucent plastic. Like I said, we'll take a closer look at all of this. Heavy, big, heavy engine. Feels great. Uh, so there you go. That is the contents of the box. Uh, got your engine pieces. You've got the main portion of the ship. Guns, things, landing gear, lots of carbonite, and uh, two carded figures, like I said, that are probably going to go up on eBay. Oh, but look, there's a nice, well, we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, all right, so for me, it's going to be a few minutes. For you guys, it's going to be an instant. Okay, we're back in slightly more comfortable territory for me, and this is interesting. This table is higher than the one I normally sit at. Uh, we're going to have to take a look at the accessories now. Uh, we've got a bag, like I said, of stuff. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, we've got the den figure that was just bagged up in there, but far superior to, well, in some ways, to our existing den figure, because, and I'm not going to get super deep into like differences in the deco and sculpt and everything, although they do look very, very, very similar. Uh, you can see the little, a little bit bluer triangle on his hand right there. Uh, but mostly the paint apps and everything are very, very close. Uh, there's a, you can see that silver right up there. The big difference in these guys is this this soft goods cape that comes with our razor crest fella and this is important because he can actually wear his jetpack with his cape on which is how he does it in the show well you know i say he can if i can get it into that little slot right there that is one thing about the four inch, three and three quarter inch, whatever you want to call it, scale. Sometimes there's a lot of business that needs to go kind of in the same spots. It can be a little tricky to get things in there together. So you've got, uh, and, and this will, I'll mess around with this a little bit more when I'm not sitting here recording video. Uh, but there you go, cape and jetpack uh, on him together like he wears in the show, which you can't do... Like, they did it on this one, and it looks pretty good, but it's not, I don't know, it just, it's, this is a weird cape, and if you take the jetpack off, it just doesn't look right. Uh, you can also, on this one, if you want to, just put the cape over the jetpack, uh, which maybe isn't great, but again, is, is an option that you don't have with that plastic cape that they did. Uh, so I, this is a far superior figure, in my opinion. And I'm glad I've got it. I'm going to be hanging on to this one uh, because I, I think it's necessary. He came with a blaster. You can see it uh, looks great. Got a little bit of paint on it. And then the Ambin Phase Rifle, which was unfortunately bent up because this guy was just in a poly bag jammed in there with all his gear. Uh, you know, the paint and everything, the sculpt looks great. Uh, it does not have, if you watched Adam Savage's uh, paint session with a prop replica of this rifle, you'll see that this is not accurate. There should be some color on this part, but, th but that's okay, whatever, uh, because it's all bent up anyway, so I'm going to have to straighten this thing out. Uh, so there's that guy, and then we have 
our off-world Jawa Elder that I'm going to be putting up on eBay. Because Phantom Jr., what did you say this guy was selling for? Like 150 Like 150 so, yeah, to eBay you go, buddy. Uh, and then this is the comparable Jawa that was available at retail. Uh, similar, not the same, but similar figure with not as nice. Interesting. Okay, so not as nice a paint job on his blaster. Uh, and then the Mudhorn Egg, he came with the intact one. But then this one has the open mudhorn egg. But I got to be honest with you, uh, to recoup that amount of what I spent on the Razor Crest, those things are not worth enough to me. Oh, and it comes with a little knife that he uses to cut open the mudhorn egg as well. Uh, oof, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that because that is a that is a very unique character. Yeah. What do you think? I don't know. We're gonna have to think about it, huh? You should probably sell the Grogu, but I don't know about the... Well, and the Grogu, uh, as mentioned, now there have been a few different Grogus in this scale. Uh, that Each one has a different portrait, uh, but you can see a little comparison here between... the. This is the retail version that came with Din in his... Well, it came with this... It came with this Din. Uh, this is not the Pram Gogu. Grogu. <laughs> Gogu. Gogurt. I am hungry now. Uh, what a terrible name. Uh, but anyway, you can see very, very similar. The big difference in this figure, aside from his face, which I don't know how well you can see that portrait. Pretty well, actually. Uh, he's, he's pretty excited. He's a happy little Grogu. Uh, he also comes with, looks like one of the macaroons, maybe. And then the pram is the big deal. You can see... This is the, you know, busted old pram that we see in the beginning. And this is a sleek, vac metal, chrome, killer looking like hot rod pram. And again, it's a little bit of a tough call because that pram looks so unique. But he's selling for 175 <laughs> so again, it's something to think about. So there you go. There are your carded figures that came uh, as stretch goals. Uh, some of the other stretch goals were some extra carbonite figures or characters in carbonite. Uh, you've got a Rodian right there. And I, you know what? I didn't check to see if there's a magnet in this to see if you could use it with the Java playset. But I'm betting no. Uh... And then some kind of frozen lady. Another scum and villainy. Looks almost like a little, little bit like Ron Perlman, maybe. I don't know. Has Ron Perlman done anything in Star Wars? That's kind of crazy if he hasn't. That's got to be in the, in the, on the way has to happen if it hasn't already. I'm thinking, I'm wondering if he done a voice or something. Uh, but anyway, and then finally, uh, this one I think was coming with the Razor Crest no matter what. This is our Mithril buddy, or our, uh, what, accountant, right? Um, I think so. So that's, that's him, and I think this one was coming with the Razor Crest no matter what. And then these guys were uh, stretch goals. So that's that. I don't know how much of this will get in here. Yeah, there we go. It fits in the frame just fine. This is the assembled flight stand. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you can see sculpted and painted Star Wars The Mandalorian. Looks fantastic. Uh, here's an up close of that crystal clear, thick plastic that I mentioned before. Uh, just sturdy. Looks great. I can't wait. To, I haven't put the Razor Crest on it yet. I'm very excited to... Uh, but just really, really nice piece, and I think this might have been a stretch goal as well. Uh, or I might be confusing that with the Robo Skull, which I'll be reviewing on this channel someday in the future. Okay, and now we've got our bag of goodies. Uh, I'm not going to... Oh my gosh. So, Oh, look, that's the little ball that uh, Grogu plays with. Very easily lost. I'm going to hope... An awkward angle here. Uh, so that's that. 
and see looks great I'm going to put that right back in that bag because I don't want to lose that thing. It probably fits. I bet it fits on the thing yeah. in the in in the uh, cockpit. Okay, so you've got uh, a blaster, another rifle blaster thing, a little crate, a bag here. All, all of the cool stuff uh, from... Just the background. This is all just set design. They've just included a ton of set design in this box, and it all interacts with the ship. I did open the ship up because I wasn't sure how I was going to proceed with the review. Uh, because, it, I mean, there's no no two ways about it. This is going to be a long review, you guys. There's a lot to cover here. Uh, but I just wanted to give you nice close-up looks at these things because once we start playing... Look at the little tools in there. That's incredible. Uh, once we start playing with the ship... Uh, you, you, this stuff is not going to be as interesting. Not to, to me. I don't even know about to you guys. To me, like once I'm playing with this ship over here, I, I say over here, uh, I'm not going to care about this handbag or whatever. Uh, and then finally, one more handbag. There you go. Uh, just a beautiful sculpted, painted detail. This fun for fun for set design, fun for toy designers. Look at that. Look at that pile of just bags. That's great. I love it. And set those over there and you'll notice we have two more of those little control knobs. I do not know if those are extras or if they're all going to fit in different spots in the cockpit, like if there are three different handles to put them on. Uh, but if they're extras, kudos to HasLab for doing that. Uh, and you can see, okay, what? I don't know what this is. Oh, this is like a cartridge for a heavy blaster. I think. I'm not sure. It feels like it would go on this one. But it, doesn't that look like uh, like a magazine or whatever? Uh, yeah, it's not a cartridge. It's like a barrel magazine thing. And now it's on the floor. Uh, but you can see all kinds of different rifles and guns and stuff here. You'll get another look at those uh, once we get into the ship. But I just wanted to show you this crazy variety of weaponry because it is in the show when they open up that weapons locker uh it's it's den's arsenal essentially so there you go that is your your bag of accessories that is included oh thank you very much phantom jr uh he retrieved whatever the heck this thing is maybe we'll figure it out i well it looks like binoculars but they very specifically have monoculars in star wars yeah. that are a thing so i don't think that's it uh all right, so that's all the little accessories. We're going to make another cut, and we will come back, and we'll take a look at this incredible starship. All right, here we go. Home stretch of the Razor Crest. Uh, we'll take a look at a couple of things on the outside before we go inside. Uh, you can see you've got nice ratcheting uh, joints on our guns, and nothing, no projectiles. Nothing shoots out of there, no missiles. Uh, and you can see just the incredible paint job, the detailed sculpt. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful item. Uh, we're going to open up the cockpit now. Maybe. You know, I did this no problem a minute ago. All right, you can see uh, the cockpit piece, beautiful, clear plastic uh, with paint on it. And I get a little bit of a oh, smudge is gone. That was me. You can see in the cockpit here, now that Grogu did not come with this Razor Crest. Sorry, I've got a headlamp on so you guys can see. I hope it's not washing everything out, but it, it just needed a little more light so you guys could see everything a little better. Uh, let's see. Let's try, instead of doing that, let's do that. Nope, that's no good either. We'll just go with our natural light. Uh, all right, you can see all of the detail in that control console, and this is our little ball here. It comes off, goes right back on. Crazy. It doesn't actually screw on. It just sort of sits there, but still um, crazy. What a wonderful detail. Uh, you can see just all all the knobs and switches and controls and the fun stuff that they've loaded this thing up with. Uh, it's unbelievable. And of course, this is the den that came with this. 
Uh, you've got the two chairs back here. Non-functioning door because it just wouldn't have been possible to connect the cabin with the rest of the ship or, or the cockpit with the rest of the ship. It wouldn't have been doable. But just tons and tons of beautiful detail in this thing. Uh, all right. We're going to go. Oh, I've still got my uh, headlamp on over there. Let's turn that off. Uh, now we're going to go up here. And, well, I'll give you a bigger view of the ship. And you can see, again, just... Uh, you could look at this thing for hours, and that's not really what we're here to do. Uh, let me check this out. All over this thing, there are panels that are a little difficult to get off, uh, but that can be removed to show details inside and to recreate sort of the damage. Oh, it pops back in a lot more easily. Uh, to recreate uh, the look after the Jawas have scavenged off of it, I guess. Let's see, there's another one right there. Some of them clip into place pretty easily. Some of them need a little more work. Uh, up here, this is a cool feature. And I feel like this was a stretch goal too. How many stretch goals did this thing have? So this panel pops off and reveals the escape pod right here. And the escape pod takes two hands to open. Now uh, you can see the spot right there as I attempt to open this thing one. There we go. Oh, oh, I almost had it. Oh my gosh. Cameraman, can you come uh, hold the camera for just a second? Just keep it aimed right there. So the uh, <laughs> escape pod opens up. Just a cool little extra that I love having there. And then it slots right back into place there and then this piece whoop, I think I put that on or maybe I didn't maybe that goes the other way oh my gosh how the heck was this on here kids read the instructions What is happening? Okay, this clearly goes on there. Well, you know what we'll do then? We'll just set those pieces aside for now. Thank you, cameraman. Because uh, we want to get to the next part back here. You can see we've got another panel. Pops open. And you know, a really cool gun pops out of there. A little concealed rear blaster. And you know what? We're just going to set all these panels aside. As we find them, take them off, set everything aside. Now, why did that one snap right off and this one? And uh, see how many we find. They're in the instructions there, but as much as I said, read the instructions. Ooh, now look, that doesn't look like it wants to go anywhere. Is this all one big piece here okay so we're gonna go over here and take a look you can see all the panels there I'm just gonna leave that right where it is because these these things are thin uh, what we're gonna do now is move inside the razor crest and you can see right here the hooks for our carbonite cameraman. Can you give me a hand again? Uh, our captives move along that runner and line up right there so that next we'll do this. We'll slot this back in. Now, this engine comes off. It appears this engine up here, this engine up here, once you put it on, it seems to be permanently on. Because I tried to give it a little tug before, because I wanted to put this on its side for something else that I had to do. And this one seems permanently on now. But this one comes off, and that's important, 
Thank you, cameraman. Because we want to get down in here. And I don't know, I've been pushing this out from the inside. Yeah, we're going to have to do this this way. All right, back in. This is a learning process, you guys. So you can see on the inside here, let's turn this around. Uh, you've got this cool ladder that pops out. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, all of these bags, these are the ones we were looking at earlier. They all come off of these hooks. And then this wall pops right out to give you access to the interior. So you can see now we can take that ladder and that pops out. That is removable. <laughs> I have just this big pile of Razor Crest parts. Uh, so now we want to flip this back around and look inside. And you can see. All right, cameraman, now you're going to be lighting man. Because once we put this back on. This is very difficult to handle because these things hanging down. All right. There we go. And now you can see in there the way that these things kind of move around. Sort of. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. So let's take that, put it in our pile of Razor Crest parts. And uh, all right, I think we can, we've got light from above now. I think we're good. Let me set that right there. And uh, let's see. Oh, we've got our walkway. Opens up and it's got a little slide out part here. So you've got access in there. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this, as I said, all these bags, can be removed and kind of put on whichever hooks you want. And then this cargo net uh, is also removable. And I have not yet done this. I don't know how difficult this is going to be. As a matter of fact, oh, it's two different pieces. Let's see. There we go. Just kind of do a little very similar to a uh, kind of raised cargo net uh, that came with the raised speeder, the black series one. Probably going to leave this one on here. So I'm just going to leave that one there because this looks like a pain. Uh, and we don't need that in our lives, do we? Uh, yeah, one more bag you can see over there. And you've got another ramp. Uh, where you can park a speeder bike or a swoop or whatever in the back of the Razor Crest if you so desire. Unbelievable, right? Things just keep showing up in this. As a matter of fact, speaking of showing up, hey, look at that. Well, wait a minute, though. We need to make sure he doesn't get away. All right, that's better. Safely frozen in carbonite. Okay, now we get into... I'm going to close that back up so we have some kind of light source going on here. Oh, and then this little bucket that has uh, the little switches on the front that look very imperial. Uh, I think this was specific in an episode. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it doesn't seem to go anywhere specific, which was weird to me. Uh, and we'll get to that because... Let's see. Let's see how well we can light this this is this is tricky you guys uh not only to light it but to figure out how exactly to get the camera to look at everything because we we got a tight space here so you've got a little hatch down here and that bucket thing does not fit in that hatch you'd think it would but it does not and then you've got right up here hey what's up little guy uh, I think that's probably as good a shot as I can get of him. Yeah, 
<laughs> this is very challenging. Uh, but you want to hear about, and you can see, uh, well, I don't know if I can even get in there well enough to show you. Let me try turning this around. And maybe from back here. Okay, there you go. Okay, that worked. Look at that. I'm learning new things. So you can see all the detail in there. Grogu's got a little hammock, which is wild. Uh, and then underneath, just a little area. And then, of course, to the left there. Let's see if I can make this happen. Oh. Okay. You've got your Star Wars bathroom complete with, uh, you know... Whatever's going on here, I'm not going to explain that. Uh, kids, ask your parents what's happening with this situation here. Uh, but yeah, first ever Star Wars toy toilet. We knew it was coming, but it's even more amazing than we expected. Uh, okay, and now we need our light source over here uh, because we're going to get to like the worst thing I have ever had to do. Oh, and I need to zoom back out. Uh, how do I do this? Whoop, wrong way. There we go. Okay, you know what? I probably don't need... No, I do need that. Oh, gosh. I'm trying not to have this little... Uh, let's see here. I would use the light on the phone, but it's not the best. Let's try... There's so many different pieces in the way of things here. What about... That's not bad. We'll take it. Because, my gosh, we're out of options. Okay, close this little panel back up. And you guys, thank you for bearing with me. This has been a wild learning process uh, for everything. Look, we got another little hook right over here. Uh, you can hang a bag on that if you want. And then in here, I will show you the most frustrating thing in my entire toy collecting history. So these are all of the weapons that I showed you that were in that plastic bag. And each weapon has a little peg that goes through the trigger guard so you can hang it up and display it in this locker like it was in the very first episode of the mandalorian and you'll notice i like the uh there's a Django fett looking pistol in there uh lots of familiar weapons uh that we've seen before and then some new ones and your extra I'm just gonna have to deal with the shadow at the bottom there your extra uh balls for the little controller in the front go they plug right on there and I had to use tweezers. So let me tell you guys what you are going to need to put your fully assemble your Razor Crest. You're going to need a headlight, a headlamp uh, like this one, and you're going to need tweezers. And getting all of those weapons because you can see what a tight fit this is for my big giant man hand. Uh, and if you yourself have big giant man hands, and if you're a toy collector, there's a pretty good chance you do, uh, that, you know what, that's not fair because, uh, we, we, as we all know, Victoria's Cantina is one of the very best Star Wars toy commentators on the planet. Uh, and, uh, she, we cannot assume has big giant man hands. So I was, actually, you know what, I'd love to have her back on the podcast to talk about this thing. Uh, but anyway, check out Victoria's Cantina, uh, one of the best Star Wars toy YouTube channels out there, uh, and a uh, podcast. Uh, just check out Victoria's Cantina. You'll find everything you need to know. Uh, but these things were a nightmare to get in there. They're so tiny, and the space is so awkward uh, that because you have you have this opening here, and then you go over here, and you have all this space, but this like this top part doesn't come off because there's a mechanism here so there's just no good way to get into that locker uh, but I've, I've spent enough time talking about that locker let's turn off our headlamp go back to our natural lighting and take a look at you know what i'm going to use a tool here 
because I'm tired of hurting my fingernails. Another removable panel. Look at that, just the front there. This nice, clear port. This looks like it should be something. We'll spin this around, point that up, get our, I say tool, it's a letter opener. It's not like it's anything fancy. Pop that off. Yes, I am a little nervous doing this, but they got to come off. We got to check everything out. This one was giving me trouble earlier. I, I started to feel like this was not actually removable, but it's just a long panel. Don't worry, that cracking sound, that's just, that's totally natural for ABS plastic to do that. That's, that's not a big deal. Oh, look, you've even got little uh, parts you can see through into the cabin right here. Uh, what else? I think there's one more over here. Maybe from... <laughs> you guys you must think I'm a giant idiot just jabbing at my $350 Razor Crest with a leather opener. Uh, this, is, this is cool. So you can see, just like in the episode, some parts of the interior of the cabin are attached to these. So you get these nice... Uh, pieces here where you can see right through very cool what what would have been even cooler is if they had a hatch right here where i could get to that weapons locker uh all right i think there might be a few more i know this that piece comes off i see you guys this is crazy this is absolutely crazy i know this there, that piece comes off. I wasn't going to let that get away from me. It had it had to go. Um, that might be it for the end. Oh, no, wait. Look. This is fun. I love this. There's another one. Uh, I'm sure this engine... Yeah, it's got another removable piece here. I'm just tearing my Razor Crest apart for you guys. I hope you... Uh, please, like, subscribe, and share... For all of the ridiculous risks I am taking with this incredibly expensive vehicle for your entertainment. I uh, hope it's working out for me. Uh, so there you go, you guys. <laughs> that is... Let's get that letter opener out of the way. That is the Razor Crest. There might be another panel. Uh, I'm not sure. But, I mean, that's about as much of a look as I can give you right now. I'm going to cut away one more time, and we're going to put this back together and get it on our flight stand so you can see uh, the Razor Crest in its, all of its majesty. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. You guys, that stand, I mean, this is how, as much as I'd like, kind of like to have it land, uh, landing with the ramps out, this is just classy. This feels like a big, giant, like, prop replica up on this space. This is gorgeous. So there it is. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for bearing with me as I kind of figured out how in the world to do this a review of something that's not just something this big, but something this intricate with so many parts. Oh, and the uh, by the way, all of the panels popped right back into place. Uh, I think once you kind of pop them off once, they're a little easier to deal with, but everything snapped right back into place. Uh, all of the panels have different shapes, so there's no confusion as to which one goes where. This is absolutely gorgeous. And if you look at the back here... Uh, you can see the the nice translucent orange uh, in the engines. Looks really great. I bet, matter of fact, let me uh, let's see if I can shine some light. There we go. Look at that. That's beautiful. I don't know why I'm even doing the other one. It looks it looks the same. Uh, so really nice effect there. This ship is incredible. It's worth every single penny. Uh, this is a masterpiece. It's a work of art. Uh, is it 
it's absolutely as good as the sail barge. Is it better? Uh, you know, that that's going to be up to the individual. That's going to be up to the collector. But this is, I've never seen a toy this impressive that was still a toy. Uh, so there you go. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share. Tell your friends about Needless Things. Uh, let them know there's a big goon on YouTube uh, nearly breaking toys in order to do review videos. Uh, thanks a lot, you guys. This is the way. Smash that like button if you like Needless Things.